Welcome to our continuing coverage here at HP Discover. I'm Andy McCaskey from SDR News, and uh, we are talking about 3PAR. And uh, in order to join us, we have the uh, Chief uh, Software Architect for 3PAR, 3PAR uh, Mr. Sumak Nasari. Hi. Hi. Good to see you again. Uh, we see you in person, we see you remotely. Uh, it's uh, a familiar face. Great, it's nice and to be here. Has it been a good show? It has been great, actually. Excellent, excellent. Well, I know that it's been an exciting one because of uh, Three Parts announcement of really kind of an industry first. Exactly. Uh, tell us about that. Uh, so, as you know, we've had uh, an industry-leading software uh, hardware platform for some time now. Uh, for the first time, we are now, and we've had a all flash array for some time now. And so, what we're doing is we're announcing deduplication and CMLC drives for our all flash array platform. Um, and with the combination of the CMLC and the duplication software, we expect to be able to deliver usable capacity at about under about two dollars a gigabyte, which is an industry first. And it's really a breakthrough price. It fundamentally shifts the economics of buying flash, because now you're able to buy flash at this at the price of the spinning media, and of course you get all the advantages of flash, which is very consistent, consistent latency, lots of IOPS, and lots of throughput. So I think this will actually you know, shift, and a lot of applications that were niche applications sitting on flash, you can imagine now mainstream applications can now move to flash for the first time. So this is a, this is a really interesting you know, shift in momentum uh, when it comes to the storage industry. How long were, was uh, 3PAR working on the project of being able to implement this in Flash? So that's a very good question. I mean, we've been uh, thinking about DDO for some time. In fact, you know, the current uh, CPU, uh, the, the current ASIC that we have, uh, was designed to be able to do some of the offloading for the duplication. So, you know, the life cycle of an ASIC is five years. So, yeah. so we had to design the ASIC five years ago with the intention of doing deduplication. And of course, you know, it always takes a lot of time to go back and, and commit and deliver on the software promises. But you know, having the ASIC and the foresight to actually have implemented that into the ASIC you know, gives us the ability to go back and retrofit the software to actually take advantage of those uh, platform services that are available inside the and box. And I feel sure it was the first tape out was the only one that you needed, is that right? Um, so, so, you know, ASICs are ASICs, right? They always take time, right? But, but you know, we're comfortable with where we ended up, actually, in terms of... What, one of the other things that you uh, talked about was, uh, was adaptive deduplication. Right. Uh, speak to that a little bit about how uh, conventionally you would have approached it, and then how you ended up finally uh, solving the, the problem and, and right. incorporating it into the product. Right. So, um, there really is two ways to do the duplication. Either you do it inline or you do it offline in the background. And that's the approach that's been taken by some of the um, you know, traditional storage vendors. They have what we call you know, background or offline deduplication, where after the data has arrived, they go back and, and sort through the data and find all the you know, duplicate data and then re-index it. Which means that there are two sets of problems with that approach. Number one, uh, when the data arrives, you have to take all the space necessary and let the data all land. Which, which can balloon the space utilization. And then the second piece is that you have to actually go now through the data a second time, find it, hash it, index it, and, and prune the data from the duplicates, which is you know, very time consuming. And computationally. And computation, well. In fact, yeah, and, and the suggestion is don't do it you know, while you're doing your load, do it in the background, which you know, shifts a lot of the administrative burden to the user. Um, and then, well, we decided that you know the best approach would not be to do an offline, but to do an inline approach, and that's why it's taken a little longer because it really has to. You have to rethink some of the approaches that, uh, in terms of the the data management, in terms of cache management, in terms of the layout. So uh, it took some time for us to actually think through the design and come up. But but the nice thing is that you know one of the architectural advantages we have is we've had a very fine-grained thin provisioning solution from the beginning. And thin provisioning at its heart is a sparse index problem, okay? And the duplication is also a sparse index problem because you have data that is indexed, but this is a vast index of space with very sparse index pointers, right? And, and since we already have a very fast technology to deal with this problem for a thin provisioning implementation, 
uh, it was a it was really nice to be able to take advantage of the existing pieces of machinery that we had and adapt them to actually to the duplication, right? And so now we have inline duplication that we believe will be very robust and very you know performant because it really relies on existing express indexing system that we've built and we've perfected over you know 15 years life of the three power software stack. So so we think we're ending up with a with a you know, really neat solution in a lot of ways with respect to deduplication and quite unique. Yeah. And of course one of the other concerns that people would have with respect to, to any flash implementation is a concern with data life as the cells begin to deteriorate over over a period of years sure. and multiple writes and, uh, sure. and, and and so forth. How do you address that? Sure, that's a really good question. You know, you're talking about the wear management or the wear issue, right? And so you know, first of all, the duplication actually helps with the wear, especially if it's inline, yeah. right? because if that if the data is arriving and as it's landing onto the array cache, you're able to actually figure out if the data is duplicate and not actually write the data. You essentially have lowered the number of writes you're doing on the drives on the back end. So right? you're limiting the number of writes. Exactly, you're eliminating. It. So not only does it help with the performance, but it also helps with the life of the drive. Okay, and and in fact, if you think about a, a simple write. You know, with the rate five, it often turns into two writes. There's a write amplification that takes place because we have to write the parity and the actual data. So that's that's two writes. There's also the write amplification that takes place on the drive itself if you're doing something that is smaller than than the size, the erase you know block size of a particular flash media. So there's a lot to be said about not writing if you don't need to, which is right, what we right. do. The second piece is we, we have something called adaptive sparing, and we have worked with the actual vendors that provide us the flash device, and we've talked about you know how does it actually work internally with their wear, with their wear leveling, and so we have some unique firmware changes uh, that we take advantage of inside the actual drive, where we tell the drive there are pieces of the drive we're not currently using. We call them spares. We've always had what's called spare across the entire system, as opposed to the old style of having a hot spare drive. We actually have a, a, a piece of the drive set aside as a spare, of each one of our drives set aside as a spare. So if we actually tell the drive that spare is not currently being used, then the drive can use that piece of a spare as what they call a rare leveling pool. And that would automatically actually extend the life of the drive. And we actually have some data that says by extending the spare size and the spare pool, we are actually reducing what's called the right amplification on the drive by a factor of two which means that the, the drive can do a much better job of reorganizing the data, doing fewer erases, and do much larger writes. So by just combining our own adaptive, you know, our own sort of write striping with the unmapped functionality, you actually have arrived at something called adaptive sparing, which we, you know, we are so comfortable with the technology, and also we have lots of data that comes back from the field, telemetry information that we collect from all the systems, that combination of these two you know, gives us a lot of confidence about the approach uh, to the point that we are actually giving our customer a five-year warranty, unlimited warranty on these devices, because okay. we're comfortable that they will e not wear them out. Is there any competitor that's matching that? As far as I know, everybody is giving three-year, uh, three-year. Right, that's 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 what I what I what I thought. Exactly. And I guess one of the final things that I wanted to, to ask about, which I think was was introduced as being new here, was was federated backup. That's right. So what does that mean? Uh, so that's a really good, uh, that's a really exciting technology. So today we have the duplication on our backup, but you know the duplication is limited to a single box. So if the size of the index, the amount of backup exceeds the size of that particular device, you buy a new device and hide it with new backup. Well, it turns out that now you have to, you know, reduplicate, deduplicate everything all over again. So if you had some data that was sitting on you know, backup device one, on backup device two, you still have to have the exact same data and then you start duplicating, which means that you will have a lot of shared data between the two. So we actually have something called a federated catalyst and it's a federated backup model now, where up to four devices communicate and they exchange information about what indexes each device actually has. So when the backup stream comes in, you know, one backup server can actually interrogate other backup servers and say, you know, do you have this index? And if they have the index, rather than actually storing the data, they can actually store just the references to the data to a remote. So essentially, now the four devices work combined as one giant backup device, which means that it's much more efficient and much more performant, because now you don't have the yeah, bandwidth. It's almost like you're storing pointers rather than storing the data. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So that's that's a that's a you know industry first where we're actually able to now 
uh, do duplicate across you know backup uh, devices. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for providing some insight into the announcements that occurred here at HP Discover. Where where should people go to learn more about HP 3PAR and uh, possibly some more information on the technologies that we've discussed? Um, HP.com slash go slash 3PAR is, is the place to go. All right. So, Mike, always a pleasure to Thank you uh, very have much. a chance to, to visit with you. Same uh, here. Thanks to you folks for uh, following us here on our continuing coverage of HP Discover. Live streaming of SDR news coverage at HP Discover has been made possible by Intel Corporation. Check out Intel Open Port IT, where you can connect with your peers at Intel on industry topics, best practices, strategies, and more. And by Microsoft, where HP and Microsoft are working together, combining their respective strengths to deliver innovative technologies to help advance your business. 